All right, guys, hunting season is here, and I have bought myself a couple new knives. Don't mind the mess out here. I've been cleaning out my drawer and working on some new prints. Had some fails and stuff, but ignore the mess for now. We got new knives. That's the important thing. All right, I've been deer hunting since, I don't know, I was, I was probably 10 or 11 years old when I first started going. I'm 35 now, so I've been doing it for a while, and for a long time, I bought cheap knives and cussed at them every time I had to use them. So a couple years ago I was gifted a Gerber knife and I wasn't real happy with uh, the way the blade was sharpened out of the box so I reprofiled it a little bit and sharpened it up a little bit. It's a, a little bit wider than I care for to do some of the stuff but overall it works pretty well and this one usually stays in my backpack. Uh, last year or the year before I was gifted one of these Mora knives. They're relatively inexpensive. I think at the time they were 15 or 16 bucks. Now they're closer to 20. They're nothing fancy but this thing was sharp out of the box and it holds an edge really well. I was able to use this on five or six deer without sharpening it before it finally started to get a few dull spots. And I'm not talking about just gutting them, I mean processing an entire deer with this and this before this finally started to lose an edge. Uh, this has been one of my favorite knives so far, but I wanted to try something new, so I looked at the list and bought three of the top rated hunting knives for 2022. One of them being a Spyderco. I, I am not sure what this name brand is supposed to be. I, I'm assuming it's something along the lines of Cricket. I'm not familiar with them. And Giant Mouse. Uh, both of these knives were in the $50 range. This one was $200 way more than I've ever spent on anything other than cooking knives so I, I'm hoping the reviews on it were accurate so most of the knives I buy are either high carbon steel or stainless this is one of those uh, specialty blend steels and I understand that that comes with a little bit of a price gap. So we have uh, synthetic scales. I believe it said these were G10 or something. I'll have to look at the specs on it. Spine is rounded, so there's no sharp edges on the back side of the blade. And they did a nice job of rounding it all the way up. There's even some serrations right here. Not, not serrations, that's not a good term to use. Uh, there's some texturing right here. I'm assuming so that you can hold the knife like this without slipping. But I'm assuming these uh, grooves are here to keep your finger from slipping so you can hold the knife like this, put firm pressure on the blade. And this, this feels pretty sharp right out of the box. Oh yeah. That takes hair right off. So the one downside that I have read about some of these specialty steels is that they can be a pain to sharpen and some people actually recommend that you send them in. I use a precision knife sharpener and unless you know exactly which degree these are sharpened to, the easiest way to do it is to take a really fine grit stone, five, six, seven thousand grit, maybe even ten thousand grit, put dye ink on the edge of the blade and adjust your angle until it is just wiping off the marker across the whole edge. And the 10,000 grit is not going to change the profile of your edge at all. Well, once you find the angle and get everything set, you can switch back to whatever grit you need to, to clean the edge back up. Uh, overall, I mean, it seems pretty nice out of the box. The scales are, are textured. They, they grip well. They're not slippery. Looks like the sweat on my hand is wiping off some of the powder, so that whitish color they had when they first came out of the box is, is going away already. Um, the screws in the side do stick out a little bit, but they are nicely rounded so that they don't catch. And it has this little lanyard hole at the back. 
it did not come with a lanyard but it did come with this leather sheath just a just a pocket style sheath nothing fancy and a little belt loop there so you can hang it for a $200 knife and I mean it's gonna get taken out in the field with me it, it's gonna get abused it'll it'll probably get beat up a little bit but I definitely will take more care of this than I do you know my 10 and 12 dollar Walmart knives that get left in the car during hunting season we'll open up this one next this is the BIWA BWA I'm assuming I don't know I, I definitely prefer the thinner style blades because it's easier to work around the butthole and to reach up inside the chest cavity. I'm not a big fan of the old method that I was taught as a child of sticking your finger in the deer's butt to hold it in place while you cut around it. And I prefer a nice thin sharp knife, sometimes even a razor blade for that process. Now this one is a molded Kydex holster and, and she's on there tight. Yeah, this is the Biwa Foltz design. Uh, again, synthetic handle material. So this one, the grind is not rounded. This looks like it was ground after the scales were put on, which is pretty normal. Whereas this one, looks like the scales were put on after the grind this one's rounded up under the scales whereas this one is flat along the sides of the scales also this part of the spine is not rounded it's not sharp but it's not nearly as smooth as the giant mouse these edges are rounded off nice sharp point very thin blade much smaller than I was expecting For, for this price range, the $50 price range of a knife, I was not expecting something this small, but at the same time, that makes it convenient to get in places. Now, the reviews that I looked at did have a complaint for this little lanyard, saying it was too small to get over your hand. I, I'm not a big guy. I'm five foot six, have fairly normal size mitts, and that barely fits over my hand, but it does get nice and tight there give you something to hold on to. These scales are not textured and while they're dry they have a nice grip to them but I kinda wonder if they're gonna get slick with blood or water on them. I don't usually get too wet unless I'm rinsing out the cavity or gutting one out in the field. Again this one is also very sharp uh, in my opinion, not quite as sharp as the giant mouse, but it is sharp and it has one hell of a point to it. I don't remember off the top of my head what steel this was, but I believe it was some kind of stainless. And this little Kydex sheath is one direction. It is tapered to match the blade, so it needs to go in the correct way. And it has a little lanyard so you can wear it around your neck or something to prevent from losing it. It also comes with this little uh, belt clip attachment so that you can hook it to your belt loop. And from the looks of it, these screws line up where the uh, lanyard is currently. So I'm assuming you'd take the lanyard off, put these screws in there and be able to wear that on your belt. This one is the Spyderco. I believe this was the Bow River model. I believe this one was also a stainless blade. Feels pretty sharp. Synthetic scales again. Uh, spine of the blade is not rounded. It looks like they touched them very, very briefly on a belt sander or something before polishing the blade. But they're 
They're not sharp, but they're not round either. Now this one actually says what steel it is on the side. It's 8 CR13 MOV. Looks pretty solid all the way around. Scales are smooth, grippy when dry. Not really sure how grippy they'll be when wet. The screws on this one are actually countersunk as they are on this model as well. So the Giant Mouse is the only one that has screws protruding. This one does have a lanyard hole in it and a hole in the spine. I'm not really sure what that is intended for. As far as sharpness goes, this, as far as the hair shaving test goes, this one would be the dullest of the three so far. And that's not really a big deal if you know how to sharpen your own knives but out of the box I expect a hunting knife to be stupid sharp. I do appreciate that back here this small section is not sharp. I have purchased some cheaper hunting knives in the past where this is sharpened all the way to the edge and when you're grabbing a hold of the knife like this it is very easy to lacerate yourself or even pulling it out of the holster on some of my cheaper knives I have reached down to grab it and stuck that point straight into my hand so I do appreciate that this is not sharp back here uh, when they are I usually take a file and round them off or I'll take the knives over the edge of uh, metal or something and, and mash the edge of that down to keep it from being sharp I don't really like when they bring the taper down into the finger groove because even though this area is not sharp it gets very thin and if you squeeze the knife too hard it, it kind of digs in a little bit. And usually when I'm processing a deer the only thing I'm wearing is nitrile gloves so there's not a whole lot of protection in that area. and. You know, sometimes when your hands are cold or wet, you tend to grip the hell out of your knife and it can cut through your gloves even though it's not sharp. Just these edges are squared off. They're not rounded. And right here where the bevel meets the tang of the blade, these are not rounded off either. And these little tiny corners are actually a little bit sharp. Those would be the corners that will tear your gloves up when you're processing an animal. And I don't, don't care for that at all. Without even looking at the book, I can damn near guarantee that if you file that down, it's going to void the warranty because you've modified the blade. Like I said, this one was in the $50 range. Um, I don't know. For a hunting knife, I don't think that's bad. I wouldn't spend that on something I'm going to carry around using abuse for turning screws and prying and stuff a little bit out of my price range for a daily knife but for a hunting knife I don't think 50 bucks is bad this one also comes with a pouch style holster sheath rather and it does it actually fits in there pretty snug that is a pretty solid fit uh, the belt loop on this one is stitched and it is rather small this would be fine for a standard belt, but if you are into the wide uh, duty belts or you know police style belts, gear belts, uh, whatever you want to call them, those may not fit in here. That is one thing to keep in mind. And I personally am not a big fan of these these leather sheaths because moisture can kill them. Now, one good thing to keep your leather protected is this Ren wax. This does really good at uh, coating and protecting your leather. And I will also usually slather some on the blade of the knife and put it in and out a couple times to try to get the inside waxed up. And that will help. You know, I, I live in Ohio. It snows here during hunting season. It rains during hunting season. It's not uncommon to get snow or water down in these uh, little edges in between the knife, especially if you're carrying it on your belt in the upright position any rainwater is going to run right down in there and there's no drain holes or anything so having some wax on the inside will help protect your leather and it also helps protect the knife from rust and corrosion 
But those are the three newest additions to my hunting knives. And if everything goes well this hunting season, we'll get to we'll get to test them out. Overall, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna like any of them better than this little cheapo Mora knife, but this uh, thinner blade style, or narrower blade style, I guess, if you want to call it, because the spine is actually pretty thick. I prefer these narrower profile knives. This one, if it were a little bit longer, I would probably like it the best. The Spider Co. and the Giant Mouse, you can see the width of the blades is very similar the length of the blade is very similar the spider co is a little bit longer maybe half an inch or so um, blade profile is similar but i don't know this spider co reminds me of the uh, cheaper laser cut kitchen knives where they come on a sheet laser cut them out and then just grind the hell out of them to get the profile they want there's no bevel or anything on this. It's just a, it's just a straight, straight grind. Whereas this one has a real thick spine with a bevel to the edge. That one has a little bit of a bevel to the edge, as does this one. Comparing the three of these new knives, in my opinion, this one looks to be the cheapest made and is the least sharp in my opinion um, of of the three I just bought I think these two are are gonna be my favorites and if this was a little bit narrower I would probably stop carrying my Mora knife or only carry it as a backup but These are my primary hunting knives, and we'll get to test them out, maybe do a review on them later, and maybe we can help you guys pick out a new hunting knife if you need one.